الصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. I'm uh, very happy to uh, have this moderation role uh, given by uh, the use of you. And we have our uh, uh, highly respected uh, scholar and beautiful presenter, convincing uh, uh, facts and figures uh, from, we can see today, living healthy is so important for a healthy community because if we are not uh, healthy, we cannot build a healthy community and therefore community cannot develop and improve and grow. So we have uh, such an important topic from an expert uh, from Houston, Texas, and inshallah, uh, he will give us uh, important guidelines from based on Quran, Sunnah, and medical and scientific data, inshallah, in terms of how we can make our health better, physical health, mental health, intellectual health, spiritual health, emotional health, whatever uh, the, the overall health, inshallah. Uh, so I call upon our respected Ustad, Dr. Abdul Haif, um, a, a senior scientist retired from uh, from NASA to give us uh, a wonderful lesson today, inshallah, as before. Thank you very much. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Uh, so today's topic is healthy living for healthy community, which is based on religion, medical, and scientific data. There are references. And um, at the end of the presentation, as you know, everything is still in the hands of Allah. He knows our living on the earth and uh, departure from the earth. So there may be some controversy. I like to warn every brother or sister that if uh, if you don't agree, you don't have to agree on everything because this is some sort of little, uh, uh, little not clear presentation. So you'll see some of the numbers may not agree with you, but see the overall mission is to live a healthy life. How can I live a healthy life? That is the focus here. Let's see. This is a picture, as you can see, this this lady, Julia, she lived 118 years, recently passed away from Bolivia. So it is possible to live a healthy life, as you can see. Allah mentioned in the Quran, like when you make dua, we ask Allah, for the worldly life as well as hereafter, both together. We have some people, they say, okay, I want everything in life hereafter. But no, Allah also teaches us in the Quran that you can have a healthy life and ask for good life in this world. Something good in your life mm -hmm. happens. You should be able to ask Allah for that. Also, in Surah al Qasas, mm -hmm. Allah mentioned that, as you can see, do not neglect your portion of this world. That means when you make dua, you should ask for both places. Not only for the akhara, but also as long as you live on the earth, you should have a good life. And there are many things. Here are some of them. Nothing except dua, avert fate, and nothing except virtuous deeds. Deeds increase life. al -Jame. Donation and sadaka can avert disaster. We all know about it. Anyone who wants to have his portion expanded, his term of life prolonged, and for people to speak well of his should remain, should maintain ties of kinship. That means if you take care of your relatives, if you help your relatives, that, that should extend your life. Narrated with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is nothing wrong for prayers for a long life for goodness, which pleases Allah, Sheikh bin Baz. Nothing wrong. There are people who are sometimes the only busy with Akhira, but Allah treasure does not have shortage of anything. He can give you both 
good in this world as well as hereafter. So this is our life. We, we are born and death. And that is our life in between. That is our span. So how can you make it extended? What can you do? Because Allah knows when you will depart him. You don't know. But what can you do? So this is the focus of this presentation. That what are the activities you can do? So it can avoid disasters, accidents, uh, and uh, have a healthy life. We continuously monitor these things. As you can see, your bank balance, your business, investment, job preference, political planning, credit line, speed control, street light, date and time. We, we continuously control these things. We check and decide and act. We continuously monitor all these things. Though we know Allah is the final authority, but we check all of them continuously about all these things and decide and act. So why not our life? Who knows about your lifespan? US government knows, IRS knows, Social Security knows, CIA knows, your, your car insurance knows, your home insurance knows, your bank knows how much money you have, how old are you, hospitals, employers, if you work somewhere, your company knows, uh, how old are you, uh, what kind of expectancy, Sometimes they want to lay you off, those kind of things. Your family knows, almost everyone. Who does not know? Is you. You're not prepared. We do not know how long you'll be living. Everybody has a plan. Your family has a plan. Your, your job has a plan. Everyone has a plan for you. Except you don't have a plan. Who are the people live? longer around the world. What are the criteria for these people to live longer? These are the criteria. They are ordinary people. They are not very famous or very healthy or a, or a muscle builder. They are just ordinary people. They have a long life. Religious people. It helps. Family person. Someone has a family, children, grandchildren around you. You are around grandchildren. It helps your life. Expectancy. Natural food. We avoid something natural, not artificial. We have all, all kinds of issues in food. No drug or alcohol. Care for health. You need to care for your health. We care for everything. Sometimes people even care more for their car than their own health. Not abuse of your body. No stressful life. If you can have a life less stressful, it will help you. Happy people. If you are happy, you live longer. Feel young. This is a very good one. Most of us, some people say, oh, I am sick, I am going to die. Of course you are going to die. But if you feel good, if you feel young, that no, I have a long, long things to do. I have a lot of activities left to do. I want to live longer. You wish good thinking. It will help you. Am I clear of what I am saying? To everyone who is listening, we have seven people. Can everyone hear what I am saying? Yeah, I can hear. Brother Yusuf? I don't want to continue when people are not hearing. Can everybody speak? Salam alaikum. Can you hear very clearly? Okay. Okay, let me continue. Common deaths in developing countries, many developing countries, common deaths, mother and birth, almost 30%. Most of the poor countries have this issue. First child birth is death, 30%. One third of the mothers die. They could not deliver. Or they deliver, during the delivery they died. Environmental impact of water, food, air. This affects your life. Lack of treatment to preventable diseases. This is very common in poor countries. Recently, there was a data that in Pakistan, most of the world countries, polio has been eliminated, except Pakistan. 
you know why they say that uh, you know bill gates is financing those those uh, vaccine polio vaccine cost less than 1 cent and in, in still pakistan has this disease because there is opposition by by people i don't want to name who doesn't want this thing and their child are born with polio and dying with polio so this this can happen this can be prevented lack of immunization polio lack of education healthcare we do not know we do something uh, it can uh, poison system or water or anything like that education is important here is a list of list as you can see this chart is made by cia cia has tracking for every country how long people will be living how long people lives cia knows for each country and they plan for it and this is a good one as you can see usa the average life expectancy is 78 if it is a woman it is 81 that's why the richest people in america are women husband work hard and they die of heart attack and wife owns everything she is the richest so it is 78 and if you go to the top canada 81 monaco is 89 japan 85 and if you go down bangladesh 72 India 67, Pakistan 66, Afghanistan 44, and Mozambique and Zambia 37. They don't even reach 50. If you go to those countries, most of the people die around 37. It is so short life. What are the reasons? We, we cannot explain everything, but this is the data we are looking for. So we can have a healthy life. It depends where you live. I have, I have 15 categories I'm going to share with you and you can watch each of them affects your life. And each of them has a level plus or minus. Plus means number of years. Minus means number of years. You can lose or gain. And that is the chart is called MBI, body mass index chart. It shows your weight versus height. What should be your uh, BMI number? As you can see, the middle one is normal. Like uh, if you are six feet and your normal C should be 18 and you should have 160 pounds. And uh, if you are overweight, which is a bad sign, above 30 is very bad. Overweight is 15, 25 to 30. Underweight is less than 18. So this shows. It is not perfect, but the doctors use this to show people or patient what should be the normal height and weight versus weight. Depending on your height, what should be your normal weight? It helps to control your weight. Structure. There are many things in the structure. If you are a male, you have minus three. If you are a female, plus four. What it means that if you are a male, you die three years early, and if you're a female, you live four years longer. It makes a difference. If your current age is 80, there is a possibility you'll live another three. But if it is less than 50, nothing to add. These are some of the examples or scale by which you can, you can calculate your life expectancy, how long you'll be living. Weight, as you can see, if you're overweight, Try to cut down your weight. If your height, you cannot change anything, but it's good to know that height makes a difference. Longer height, longer expectancy. So if it is less than 18, you subtract 2. If it is 18, 25, plus 2, those kind of numbers. It helps your bringing BMI around 18 is a good thing to do you cannot change your height but you can change your weight family history what is the average life of your family members that can project your life expectancy as you can see from this scale 
heart disease. There are many families have family heart diseases and that can catch someone from that family. If you do not have that tradition or that system, it will help you. Obvious, it's not a good thing to have. If you have more than two or three daughters, if you are in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, you lose life. You lose life because you'll have to pay dowry and all kinds of expenses. If you live in Middle East, it helps actually, as you can see. If you have uh, no daughters, you don't have to worry. Uh, so friends age, if you meet to meet, mix with people, meet with people whose uh, life can affect your life, thinking, as you can see here. If you are a grandparent, it can help you. If you are 85, there is a possibility you can live another three to five years. If you don't have, that chance. If you have grandchildren, it is a good sign. You spend time, quality time with your children, grandchildren, it will help and so on. Which country you live? Here is the example, USA and Canada is zero. And if you go to Australia, it is little longer. Russia is another two years. Europe, another three years. Japan, plus five years. On the other hand, if you go to China, less minus two. And you can see gradually, if you go to Africa, Central Africa is minus eight. That means you you live less than eight years, whatever current age you have. As compared to if you live in the West, those kind of things. It is a, some, some sort of guidelines, which area can pollute. Like if you live in Delhi, good example, right now it is highly polluted air. Uh, you cannot even see each other. Smog, all kinds of things. We're going to come to that. Education, how does it affect your life? If you have no education, minus three. If you have PhD, plus three. As you, it makes a difference. Education helps your longevity. Exercise, it helps. Anything you do, you can see all positive. Everything is good. Every exercise you do, even walking. Recently I found out that human body has 50% of your things through which blood flows is in your legs. From waist to the foot that carry 50% of your blood vessels, blood veins, through which blood flows. So if you don't do anything, just walking itself is a major thing to do every day. If you walk every day, whatever length you can, it will help you. Any other exercise, sports, football, basketball, anything will add your life, extra life. Oh, sorry. Food. Look at the color of your food. Is it colorful? It will help because you have varieties. You're not only one color. Some people only eat beef. It is not a good thing to do. You should have a different color food. Fruits, vegetables, uh, all kinds of combination. It helps. Balanced diet, it helps. You don't want to fill up your stomach with only uh, beef, meat. Once in a while is okay, but you should not have always meat. You should have more vegetables, whole grain, and that adds your life. It helps. It takes less headache to process into your system. Beef takes longer. Habits, good habits, bad habits. It can affect your life. Good example, do you accept your mistakes? If you, you did something wrong, do you accept quickly? If somebody point out that uh, uh, you are wrong here, do you, can you accept it right away? It was the habit of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Accept your defects. Most of the people are stubborn. Relaxed, are you relaxed or stressed out? It makes a difference. Are you aggressive, intense? It is not a good thing. Always easily get angered. 
it is not a good posture for you, it will affect your life. You are stubborn, hard headed, angered. Unfortunately, it can affect your life also. Look at our leaders, Muslim leaders around the world, highly stubborn, angered, ego. That can cost. Soft drinks, little bit is okay, but if it is heavy, it's not good. Buckle your seat. Do you buckle your seat before you move your car? It can make a difference. Some people do not buckle. Some people even uh, do while they are driving. But the best driver is the one who first buckles his seat before he starts moving his car or starting the car even. Speeding. If you are speeding, you are stressed out. It's not good. You will have an accident. If you don't speed, drive at moderate speed, it helps. You are relaxed. Less chance of hitting someone else. Many things it can risk your life. You have to have asthma, minus 3. No asthma, plus 2. Lung cancer. These are all costly. As you do blood count, low blood count, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart bypass. Sometimes you have to do bypass. There is no avoid. You cannot avoid. But it cuts down your life. No bypass can bring you to the original condition when you were born. So it, it is costly. Some family has those kind of hereditary way of uh, bypassing. If it runs into family, it is, uh, you know, you cannot avoid, but you have to be careful. Cancer. And there are many other things like prostate cancer, diabetes. It is a silent killer. It is said. So watch out how you take your sugar. Snoring. HIV positive. Cancer in the family. Cancer has no cure. People say a lot of things, but actually no cure. Especially women. Breast cancer is very common. If a mother has breast cancer, doctors say 50% of the time the daughter will have breast cancer. It runs into the family. So you can control your life expectancy. You control your lifestyle. You take precautions, kidney problem, liver problem. They are all costly. You have to live earlier. Everything is working fine. Your heart is working. Your sugar, I mean, uh, Blood pressure high, low, everything is works fine, but kidney uh, can uh, end end someone's life and liver also. So these are some of the things to know and expect. You cannot change some of the things. These are uh, life uh, style. If you are married, it helps. It's almost five years difference. If you are not married, get married. If you live lonely, it is bad news. You should not. If nothing happens, at least Shaitan will be working with you more hard. If you are religious, it helps. If you are not religious, it does not help. Religious people live longer. So sometimes you play puzzle. You know, senior citizens sometimes live lonely away from family, children, so they use a puzzle. It helps. It, it exercises your brain. It is a good thing to do. Game learning. If you are 65 and you're still working, it's a good, good sign. Drug is bad sign, as you can see. It can kill you. If you are left-handed, it helps. Sometimes it's, we do not like it left-handed, but someone writes as a signature or do some extra activities with left hand, it balances his body system. It has been found. Uh, driving with uh, while in intoxicated, 
it's a bad thing. Alcohol is a bad thing. As you can see, it can kill you if nothing happens. It is doctors say that maximum time is needed, almost eight hours, to process alcohol from your liver. It is a very uh, what you costly item. The moment someone is drinks alcohol, it takes almost eight hours, highest time, to process to run through your system before it exits from your system through urine and stool. Cosmetic surgery is costly. Multiple partners, and there is a chance of infection, diseases, all kinds of things. Protection helps. If you have a pet or dog, if you are a senior citizen, if you are an elderly person, if you have some pet, it will help you. It helps if you feel better, those kind of things. Vitamin supplements help sometimes. Smoking is not a good thing to have. Never is good. Almost six years different. Someone heavy smoking versus non-smoking. Your, your uh, what you call, um, passage through which air flows will be clear. Sleeping. Excess sleeping is not good, as you can see. Some people sleep long hours. This is not good. Limit to five to six hours, the best time. It should not be less. If it's less, it also uh, uh, hurts you in your system. We need more sleep. But you do not oversleep. Sometimes people on weekend do oversleep. That is not a good thing. Maintain the same hours every day of your life. And that way it will regulate your body and you'll have a better life. Volunteer, if you volunteer activities, you do some activities, dawa or uh, any other activities, it will help you. You're helping uh, poor people, helping refugees, helping uh, raising money to send to Gaza or any other thing, all other volunteer activities, helping your relatives, poor relatives. All these activities will help. Helping the presentation, educate people, all these things are voluntary. It helps your life expectancy. This is the thing I was talking about, air quality. As you can see, you can't even see the cars. If you live in this area, it's not a good thing. If you live with a smoker, second hand smoking, they call it. And it is bad sign. You should not live with a smoking person. Air quality, if it is poor, it costs your life. Think about the people who are living in Delhi right now. There's so much smog, they cannot even drive properly. If it is less good, it adds your life. As you can see, it makes a difference about three to four years. City population, if you live, you live in a big city, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of smog, and you lose your life. If it is a suburban or a smaller town, less traffic, less uh, you know uh, sound or activities, you live longer, peaceful, as you can see. If you can live in a suburban area, then in a big city. What is your profession? What kind of work you do? It helps your life expectancy. If you are a cab driver, you lose. In New York, it is said that average cab drivers drive 16 hours. 16 hours they sit in the cab and drive. So after 10 years, most of the cab drivers became crippled. From, from west to down, everything is all gone. So you live short life. You need activities in your job. Comedian has a better life. As you can see, they always talk good things, jokes. It helps your life expectancy. They care. Daily labor. You know, they lose life. Comedian, the reason being, you can have a comedian life. Prophet Sallallahu used to have a beautiful life. So make your life 
healthy, joyous, so that it can help your life expectancy. If you have a desk computer operator, always sitting on the desk, running your computer, it's not a good thing to do. As you can see, take breaks. That's why many major companies like Microsoft has a system. Every hour you work, you have to take break. Even when you are flying, five hours, six hours, seven hours, nine hours, you just take a break and walk. Do not sit back. It has been found these days, many airlines has a system to have insurance of uh, clogging of your leg. If you keep sitting for five or six hours or sleeping in the plane, there is a possibility your leg can be clogged by blood. And and uh, it happened. One passenger flew from, I think, New York, went to Australia. And after she landed, she went to the hospital and died because she had leg was clogged by blood circulation. So make activities. Doctors live in a in hospital is not healthy place. Hospital job, minus three to plus one. I, do, I am not saying that you have to leave your job in the hospital, but find alternatives. If you have alternative options, choose that option. In the USA, it has been found that on an average, 105,000 people die. You know why they die? Because they went to the hospital to visit somebody. They were infected from the hospital, came back. And so hospital is not a good thing to visit. If you have no choice, that is different. But if you can avoid, try to do that, especially children. They, they are not even allowed to go inside the hospital. So those are the precautions hospital even take. Walk. If you walk every day, it helps. Or lift job. If you have a job while you are lifting something, it helps, like exercise. If you are a sumo wrestler, average life of a sumo wrestler is 33 years. Very short life, as you can see. It makes a big difference, as you can see. How much stress you have in your job? If you use a lot of cell phone, it is costly. You should not. You should not use cell phone unless you, you have to. I have seen people continuously use cell phone, continuously keep talking on the phone. No, it should not be. Phone is for emergency only. Whether it is cell phone, or even if it's free call, or WhatsApp call, use it short, as much as possible. It helps. No phone, plus two, as you can see. You commit every day to your work. It makes a difference, as you can see. If you do, if you come out less than 10 years, 10, 10 miles per day, it, it adds your life. You're exercising, you're reading newspaper, you're not falling asleep. But the longer you stay in the commute, it costs your life. Years, even. It's very stressful. Job in the stress. You have a stressful job, minus three, no stress, plus two. If you can manage stress, that helps. You will have stress somewhere, whatever your activities you are doing. But if you can manage, make exercise. There are stressful management exercises, like you count rivers, count slowly, breathe slowly, uh, breathe longer. Those kind of things can help minimize your stress. Press a, uh, a stress ball. All kinds of things relate to your activity to reduce your stress. Income, it makes a difference. If you are very rich, you, you live quickly by heart attack and many other reasons. If you have low income, it's good for you. You go to paradise 50 years ahead of other people. How about that? Prophet Salaam said. So, lot of money is not a healthy thing to have. If you have more of money, donate. Send to Gaza, send to your relatives. Share with others. It will help you to live longer. On the other hand, if you are always stressful about your money, what you're going to do with the money, where are you going to invest, all this worry continuously bothers you because you have so much money. And so you live early. You cannot control yourself. 
are you happy or not happy? That makes a difference. Abraham Lincoln said, most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. If you think you are happy, you are happy. It is a relative term. Nobody can buy happiness from anywhere. Amazon does not sell happiness. You have to create yourself. If you think you are happy, you are happy. If you think you are not happy, you are not happy. It is up to your mind. Right? So, think positive, think happiness, make your life happy. It will help you. Interact with other people with happy. As you can see, plus three if you are happy, if you are not un unhappy, minus three. You are unhappy with your job, unhappy with your family, unhappy with your relatives. That is not healthy thinking. Convert into happiness. The Prophet says, narrated by Kirmizi, I never, one Sahabi says, I never came across a person who smiled as much as the Prophet. It's so beautiful. A smiley face. It is a good sign. You are happy. You greet people with a smile. Handshake. Eye to eye contact. Those are the habits we can develop and make your life happy. You can meet with other people happy. You can talk with your family members happily and you will have a healthy life. Taking care. How much you are taking care of your health? People are careful about their car, but how about your health? You visit doctors as needed, it is healthy. It should not happen that you do not go to the doctor at all. It is not good. Your if life goal is defined, what you want to be, what you want to do, it will help you. If you do not have any plan, you will you'll have us that do things. It will cost your time and life. Medicine use. If you do not use heavy medicine, continuously. There are people I have seen, 10, 15 items, different items. One for this, one for that, one for that, all kinds of things. They take. This is not a healthy sign. Try to minimize medicine as much as possible. After all, every medicine has a bio, what you call bio, uh, has a side effect, and it can uh, it can affect your life. So try to minimize as much as possible. Blood pressure check. If you regularly check and control your life stress, it will help. Hearing aid. If you need a hearing aid, use it. If you don't use it, it is not a good thing to do. You should use it because if you are not using it and you cannot hear properly, then you'll be stressed out. You'll be asking same question again and again. Can you excuse me? Can you tell me what you want? What you are saying? I do not understand. All kinds of things. So make your life simple. Yearly checkup. If you do it, it is good. You should check it. Whatever the doctor say, you may agree or not, that is different. But you should have a regular checkup. You don't have a sudden sudden surprise that you went to the doctor, you found out you have a cancer somewhere, you have a prostate, you have high blood pressure, your sugar level is high. It is sudden. You found out very late. It can cost you. So this is the number of items, 15 items as we can see. Each of them has a scale factor. Each of them has a value. Which one is most important? Highest is lifestyle, habits, health risk, taking care, family history. All these things are good ones. These are important. Less important is income. As you can see, it has no role at all. Very poor condition. Education has some value. Happiness has some value. But they are minor in this case. So focus on the first top five items, which is almost more than 50% of your 100% items. And then you can regulate, you can regulate everything. You can score high on every item. But check those top five items, it will help your lifestyle. How to increase lifestyle? Death comes suddenly, so you should prepare now. Take action to score higher points on each item. I showed you all the items. Try to score higher 
whatever score you are doing it see if you have a number can you make it more can you make it positive and higher it depends on your thinking on your habits on your activity select at least three items and focus on daily control your lifestyle be focused and disciplined if you are disciplined you can accomplish much more especially if you are doing the work of dawa discipline whatever you want to say prepare yourself early on be focused what you are saying what you will be saying what is your conclusion who is listening to your presentation it makes a big difference it it helps maximize remaining years of your life on dawa volunteer compensate if you violate somebody's rights ask forgiveness halal income food do it for allah only doa so these are the activities as you can see if you focus you will see that your life expectancy will be better more organized you will be disciplined person exercise regularly drink lot of water 80% of our body has water so that's why drink make a habit of drinking as much as possible <clears throat> it helps your life water flushes out your system it will clear breakfast like a king it is said how much it is true there is some value on it you, you eat heavy breakfast lunch like a prince dinner like a beggar most of us do the opposite thing we eat heavily in the dinner we have hardly have lunch and breakfast hardly anything like a cup of coffee and keep going you think that you are be smart you are having a good life no it it works oppositely the moment you eat heavy in the morning you don't have to eat all day you make your habit in such a way that once you have a heavy breakfast you can leave the whole day without eating anything that is okay but if you do not have anything in your stomach like your tank is empty and you are driving and very soon you will stop because you ran out of gas same thing here eat a healthy thing heavy in the morning whatever you want to eat just buzz it in the morning not in the evening in the evening you should try to make a walk regular check up no surprise disciplined organized daily It should be daily, not not uh, occasional. An absolute daily. Control life expectancy. Colored colorful food with less meat, vegetables, and fish. Fish is a very healthy thing. It has lot of benefits. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala when He will offer the what you call dinner for the people of paradise, He will offer fish. So fish is a good diet. It has lot of good thing. which you cannot find in the meat meat has all the by products all the uh, accumulation of many chemicals these days any beef you buy it is processed meat that cow was processed the goat was processed to make it big quickly and that's how it can it can you pay the price daily prayer limit your desires and wishes there is no limit how much you want but try to limit yourself so you can accomplish something be prepared to live the world who is prepared to live the world nobody wants to die even after all these studies i showed you everybody wants to live here forever but as a muslim we know that you have to die you have to go back to allah so prepare make your lifestyle in such a way so you can live peacefully less debt less liabilities you have a will and you budgeted everything in such a way so you can live very quickly so here is the free selection laughing at your own mistakes lengthens your life shakespeare said if you if you accept your own mistakes if you find your own mistakes and if you make If you laugh at it, that oh, I made a mistake. I'm so stupid. I'm so foolish. It will help you because you accept your mistake. And laughing at your wife's mistakes shortens your life. Shakespeare's wife. It is a 
may be a joke, but it has some value, as you can see. So if somebody finds some mistakes in you, you should appreciate, you should thank. Yes, I made a mistake. Accept it. Especially if your wife says that. If your wife point out that you made a mistake, you made a blunder, you should not have done this, you accept it. You'll see your, your family life will be peaceful. So this is the table. I have an exercise presentation on which you can see the red boxes are your score. Your score, is it plus or minus, plus or minus. And then we, at the end of the bottom, it can calculate, it will show you how much longer life you have. And that is not the reason for this table exercise. The table is on the improvement, on the green side, on the right side column, there are same scale, some of them you cannot change. You see, it is already filled with numbers. Those things you cannot change. But whatever is left, you can, you can evaluate after, say, one month or two months and see if you can score better. Like you, you, like you did not exercise, now you started exercising. So from minus, it will add plus. So at the end of the scale, you will have another number. You added some value of your life by regulating these activities. And that can extend your life. That is the exercise. We should continuously do that until death. So this is your scoreboard, your current age, your score, how much is your score? how many years left, and then you go for improvement and see what additional extra life you can have. You should do continuously. Like you do, if you have a bank balance and you do, you are not happy, you continuously keep checking, you're depositing, you're adding values, and you check it, what is my current balance? You know exactly how much money you have. You're not sitting back. So why are you sitting back with your life? And it can stop you. So can you make it longer? Can you make it extended? You have to go anyway, but can you make it little longer? Can you improve yourself? Can you exercise? Get, stop smoking. Do something which will add few years of your life and move on. So this is the exercise. I have a book on it and it shows all the tables. I can send to the table or, or, or you can copy this presentation and share with everybody. Everybody can, should make a table, one page, with all these numbers, 82 variables in this presentation, 82 variables, each of them has a plus and minus, and see whatever you score, and then after one month or two months, you adjust your life expectancy, lifestyle, and recalculate your life, and see how much extra life you can have. And you keep doing this process every month, every three months, or every year, until then. This is exercise to make you alert, like we are alert for our life, for our job, for our money in the bank. And so why not you exercise our life expectancy practice like this, as I showed you, which will give you a healthy life. So we have Quran, as we discussed, the Quran to English, Spanish, and French. I supply to many countries now. This final Quran on the left side, as you can see, it is printed in Turkey. It's very beautiful. I even supplied to Pentagon. They use for Air Force, Army, Navy, worldwide. So here is my request. Last, last slide. Do things what others don't. You do not want to do things which other people are doing. You add find something extra something different so that you can add value to the community, to the people whom you are addressing. If you are giving a lecture on Quran, and I'm just giving an example on certain topic, other people are also saying something, you find some new topic so that it can add value. Here is some list. You have 24 hours. You should budget. You should not just keep sleeping and doing nothing. Every hour you should assign. If you go to your doctor, you'll see that every minute, every 15 minutes, he has a passion. He budgeted. Every appointment is made every 15 minutes or 10 minutes even. And out of those minutes, half of the time is gone by the nurse. He comes and makes, she check your blood pressure, sugar pressure, uh, 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 what temperature. She does half of the work and you have last three to five minutes for the doctor. 
he already knows what the nurse found out and then the doctor decides what to suggest, what to add value on those things. So budget your life every hour throughout the whole year. Every day should be same. You should not make any difference and look for improvement. Whatever you presented three months back, it should not be the same presentation. It should, should be improved presentation. And, and delegate. Delegate means what you are you presented, can somebody else present? That's why I share my presentation with everyone. Anyone around the world, they can do the same presentation or make a better one. Make someone with your presentation better than you. That is adding the value. If someone makes the same presentation, then he's not adding any value. He should be able to do a better one and present. Write a small article in Facebook, WhatsApp, video clips, picture, all these things. It adds value. Make a short presentation. It doesn't have to. I have, I post every weekly, as you can see, now more uh, from Gaza. But uh, add something educational, something different, something unique. And it will help people to understand better about the topic you're talking. Interview with newspaper, TV, radio. Most of us are, are good in talking in communities in the, in the, uh, in the masjid. But how about other places? Like give a TV interview, talk to a radio talk show, and uh, talk to university where we have a mixed gathering of different religions. Those kind of things add value. Interview with newspaper. Every newspaper has a, uh, like Houston Chronicle is the newspaper in Houston. They have every Saturday, they have a religious article. They published every Saturday. All the, the churches, whatever they are doing, it is published free. So they have a religious editor. Talk to the religious editor and publish your Marjis activities. We have so many activities throughout the whole year, current events. Talk to the religious editor and he will publish your article free. It happened with me many times. You can do the same thing. Jail dawa, street dawa, always carry dawa material. It should be your part and parcel of your life. If you are a salesperson, you always carry samples. How about carrying your dawa samples? It should be always with you. Joe Gerard, there is a gentleman, Italian car salesman in Detroit in 1970s. He is considered the best car sales person in the world. He used to sell average on an average six cars a day. People cannot even cannot even sell one or two cars a day. He used to sell six cars a day, and he's considered the best car salesman in the world. And he used to speak broken Italian English. How was his success? He wrote a book, it's called How to Sell Anything to Anybody. If anybody has time, read that book. I read that book. It's a very valuable book. He shows what are the symptoms. How do you get to know the customer? How can you sell? The person came just to look around, check prices, or buy a used car, but he goes out with a new car. How it happens? So this is his secret. And uh, basically, you need to know the, the customer's interest. Open If you open the customer's trunk, you can find the customer's interest. What, are the, what is the hobby of the customer? And try to talk in that line and, and sell cars. So this is the hikmat of Dawa. If you're doing Dawa, you learn from the other person with whom you are talking, what are the things he likes, what are his interests, and talk in that direction. And you'll have a very soon common understanding. There will be less difference in argument or opinion between the two persons. So these are the hikmat we can learn. Simple YouTube, a small YouTube for instant hour. These days, as you know that YouTube and WhatsApp, uh, all these things are getting very high tech. Uh, so try to make your YouTube very short, one minute, 30 seconds, uh, three minutes, those kind of things, very short, not half an hour. Those days are gone. Those who are thinking of half an hour, 15 minutes, even 10 minutes are living in another world. Today's world requires you, our youth wants to see 10 seconds. TikTok, all kinds of things are there. I'm not saying there are good things and bad things also, but if you want to give your message, make it very short, short YouTube. Make presentation on science, Quran, 
Mars, Psyche. You know, this NASA just sent the, um, the probe, this last one, to the planet which is made out of gold. Uh, tardigrade, all these things are interesting to you and they'll get attention. A lot of data should be, information should be in your presentation. Something new data, people have not heard about it. Educational numbers, share presentation. No money position on your activities. Every day is different. Update activities. Work with all organizations. Especially those who live in the West. We have we are like 2%, 3%. In French, maybe 10%. Um, but uh, in England, maybe what? 3%. In the USA, 1%. So as you can see, we are very minor in this society. Very few in numbers. So to work with all organizations to reach out all kinds of people, network, uh, WhatsApp, Zoom, anything, anything you can connect anywhere. You should, you should do that. You should be open to that. Not limited to your own circle, own people, and you'll be limited to only your all, all followers. You should make it open. Every Muslim is your customer. Every Muslim you visit, you see in the masjid, is your customer. So work with all organizations. Anywhere, any place you can add value, you should do that. And NASA says two things. We should hear. Yeah, that's why they are so advanced in technology and everything. Whatever NASA is doing today, you'll see the results after 30 years. I used to work over there. Whatever we used to do now today, we have internet, we have uh, telephone, we have weather forecasting, all these things we did not have 30, 40 years back. Now we have those predictions. We have those numbers. We can quickly reach out to people and benefit. The sky is the limit. There is no limit how much you want to accomplish and failure is not an option. You cannot fail. You should not have, you work in such a way so that you always do not fail. You accomplish even at a minimum level. Jazakallah khair for listening and uh, I'll, I'll be happy to answer any question. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Abdul Hai, uh, excellent presentation, and uh, we have learned how to live a healthy life, and it will all help us. So, uh, if you have any comment or questions, and hopefully, inshallah, Dr. Abdul Hai will. Uh, can you send your presentation to Brother Yusuf Yus so he can circulate uh, okay. in addition to the recorded link? Uh, so if anyone has any question or any comment, please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah okay, Dr. Abdul Haik. Really, this is a very inspiring uh, speech and uh, the data is provided are very useful to all of us. And inshallah, uh, our brothers and sisters will be able to utilize it uh, to help to monitor themselves and uh, their health. And really, this would be a very uh, good resources for all of us. And uh, hopefully, although the attendance uh, today is not that high, but uh, we will post it in our uh, youth ch channel so that more people will be benefited from it. And we've, so we will also circulate your PowerPoint among uh, our contacts. Uh, alhamdulillah, we are very grateful for your contribution and we look forward to your continuous support. Uh, every time you present um, many things which are under well research and really you are a very resourceful person. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah okay. Alhamdulillah. Anybody else wants to say something? I know there is. Um, yes, I'm here. Uh, your brother, can you hear me? Or is it too yes, loud? Yes. No. Go ahead, yes. please. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you so very much, um, Dr. Abdul Hai, for the presentation. Uh, my name is Ahmed. I work with uh, Mr. Yusuf on the United Muslim Association of Hong Kong. Uh, this is my first time joining one of your lectures, and mashallah, I. 
I, you know, I did not think, uh, I mean, it's, it's very, very new perspective for me to actually really put the things into scores and numbers when it comes to, to longevity. Uh, and, and this is really, you know, a very unique perspective that I'm getting here. Uh, mashallah, def- definitely comes from, uh, from uh, from a background of uh, like yours, mashallah, in aerospace and uh, and NASA, very technical and very very you know uh, like the breakdown into the scores and the numbers, mashallah, I'll definitely go through the the lecture again, try to share with uh, with my friends as well. Uh, we would love to have you, inshallah. We, we'll be inshallah in touch with you, uh, brother Yusuf and I, uh, to have you inshallah maybe to organize a series in in uh, partnership with uh, with Umma. Reach out to the young people of uh, in, here in Hong Kong, our community in Hong Kong. So thank you again. May Allah subhanahu wa taala bless you and bless your work. I just want to ask: Do you have a website for final revelation, um, or uh, or just uh, or just your email? No, the final revelation is uh, is there, uh, but I think um, somehow it was hacked. So I'm trying to fix it back. It's called finalrevelation.net. Okay, finalrevelation.net. Okay. But you can reach me through this uh, WhatsApp number, as you can see on this scale, 832-877-792 or abdulhai at hotmail.com. That is, I constantly sure. agree on a check. Sure, so that's I would reach out. Just for information, brother Ahmed. Just for information, yes. you need to make uh, add plus one before you write. Yeah. Yes, sure, sure, sure. That's I will reach out, inshallah, and uh, happy to help with the website if you need any help. I'm uh, I'm from an IT background, so I can help with the website if needed, inshallah. Okay, Mashallah. Right me, I, I need help. <laughs> yes, really. Sure, sure, of course. Yes, happy to help and stuff. Okay, anybody inshallah. else? Nice talking to you. Well, yeah, come on. Alhamdulillah. We, we will follow else? up. We'll follow up there with the, with the, with the content. And really, uh, Dr. Abdul Haik is a very resourceful. And also, he also responds to WhatsApp. I, I think nearly 40, 24 hours. Every time yes. I, I WhatsApp him, he immediately <laughs> replies. So, so right now, we, are, right now we, have, we have emergency in Gaza. As you know, hospital is being bombed. People are being killed. Uh, you know, it is it is intolerable. I could not sleep. So yes. when I see something yes, useful, yes, yes. something educational, I share yeah. as much as possible. Yes, yes. Very good. We all share the grief like and... Uh, I mean, I mean, may Allah elevate this bala on the Ummah. Brother Ahmad, uh, there is a very interesting side also of Dr. Abdul Hai. Whatever, uh, any junk mail he receives, he doesn't delete it. He sends a dawah material to that, uh, um, you know, junk mail. Subhanallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. <laughs> so taking every single opportunity, that's Yeah, that's make, up, make use of any opportunity. No, the uh, answer is very simple. If somebody has time to send you a junk mail, you should appreciate it and make him <laughs> your customer and put him into work. Because, yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different level. Yeah, like Joe Gerard, as I mentioned, he's the best car sales. If you have time, read that book. Right. I want you to read right, that right, book. Right. To learn how to sell oh. anything to anybody. How to also, sell everybody should right. know. Everybody should know that Dr. Abdul Hai does uh, street da'wah to non-Muslims in Houston. Even though he's 75, he's still, he's like 55 in terms of energy. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Mashallah. I like to read 120 also. <laughs> Inshallah. 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 I ask Allah. Inshallah. So anybody else wants to say something? Anybody else wants to give comments? Certainly, Brother Ahmed gave uh, an inspiring feedback and also uh, I think uh, it is something that we all agree with. So anybody else wants to s- uh, share some thoughts and uh, reflections? If not, then I um, hand over to the organizer of the program, Brother Yusuf Yu. Uh, please conclude. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, on behalf of Triple IT Hong Kong office, we would like to extend our 
greatest appreciation to Dr. Abdul Haidt for his presentation and his uh, thought for working uh, um, uh, material uh, and hopefully our brothers and sisters will be benefited by doing the follow-up because after listening and forget and uh, that doesn't serve our purpose and really uh, we may should make dua for Allah to reward most bountifully Dr. Abdul Hai's uh, um, uh, preparation and Amen. his uh, knowledge. And uh, on this, uh, and also, we would like also to thank uh, the support of uh, Ustad Mahmoud Abdul Azami for his uh, being our backbone uh, of the program. Uh, he become the speaker for most of the topic uh, most of the time and at the same time help us to reach out resourceful person like uh, Dr. Abdul Haik. So mm -hmm. may Allah reward him and his family for all these wonderful work. And mm -hmm. I would also like to um, thank our brothers and sisters who uh, joined our program today and I hope that you would come to join us next time but also bring your friends as well. And uh, we should fully utilize the time uh, spent by our speaker, our world-learned speaker. And hopefully in the near future, Dr. Abdul Hai will also share his other uh, um, topics uh, on different aspects of Islam and, and human life. Uh, so uh, unless uh, our brothers and sisters have anything to add, if not, then uh, thank you so much. May Allah bless all of you. Wa bin lahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Audhu bin lahi nashaitan wa jeeen. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Wa al-asr. Yina insana lafikus. Yina nadina amanu wa amin rassari hat. Wa ta wassaw bi haq. Wa ta wassaw bi yasaf. Subhanaka lahumma wa bihamdika asadun la ilaha yina anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi Thank you again for your joining. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa brother uh, Stephen Chen want to ask something? Uh, no, okay. I just want to thank you very much for uh, Mr. Yu because uh, Mr. Yu is my teacher. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. It is thank very, uh, what we call, very uh, knowledgeable uh, section that is I can join uh, to it. And then uh, it is very good. Okay. And then uh, uh, still keep me posted whenever there's any uh, any other section in the future. Thank you so much. Inshallah, Inshallah most of the time, we organize it on the second weekend uh, second sun, uh, Sunday. But unless there are some events or some clash of other program, then we may defer to the third. But anyhow, we will regularly post the program to our uh, mailing list. Um, uh, now, thank you so much. See you again okay. next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.